What's up guys? So in this video, I want to talk to you about how to settle your debt and improve your credit. Let's dig in. So my disclaimer before uh, I continue moving uh, with this is that one, this is not legal advice. I am not a licensed uh, attorney. You definitely want to seek um, the advice of of, of an attorney if you are contemplating bankruptcy or things of that nature. Um, and I am not a financial advisor, so I uh, not giving any kind of financial advice. There's no investment advice in this video. I own a credit repair business, and so I want to speak to you from the perspective of what these options, um, what these uh, options are. If you have a lot of, uh, of overwhelming consumer debt or credit card debt or whatever kind of debt you have, and what your options are, as well as what the consequences are credit-wise. So let's uh, dig in. So, so first and foremost, if you're if you're facing an overwhelming amount of, of consumer debt, is what we'd like to call it, um, then there are, there are a couple of options. You know, number one, obviously, the best option for that's going to have the very little you know negative impact against your credit score is going to just continue to make your payments or pay off the debt in full now i know for a lot of us if if that is not you know the the best option or a favorable option or even a doable option you probably wouldn't be watching this video or reading this article you're looking for some options you're looking for some alternatives to to help you get out of debt um in a, a uh, either a time um either a not so time consuming fashion or in a fashion that's going to help you improve your your credit. So first and foremost, there's also bankruptcy that uh, there's out there. There's chapter seven, 13 and 11. So to kind of break that down, to kind of simplify it, uh, chapter seven bankruptcy is where you typically as the debtor can can um, walk away from your debt. They liquidate your assets if you have it. And if you don't, then whatever is uh, not liquidated, you essentially get to walk away from from the debt to to some degree. Again, speak with an attorney or regarding this. Chapter 13 is where you are paying back, you know, close to 100 percent of the debt that you owe you're going to make a monthly payment to the court or to the trustee and then those funds are allocated to your creditors both options and, and by the way chapter 11 is for business so if you have a business and you file bankruptcy for the business then it would fall under chapter 11. both 7 and 13 impact your credit score for for 7 to 10 years and it's a public record for the rest of your life so there's always going to be documented at the courthouse there's always going to be a record that you follow bankruptcy and if you apply for a mortgage you have to be truthful in that application of, because on the mortgage application i ask you have you ever filed bankruptcy you have to ask uh, answer that question truthfully with with yes um so the from a scoring perspective obviously filing bankruptcy it doesn't ruin your credit score you can definitely bounce back credit score wise typically within you know one to three years you're able to start bouncing back if you start rebuilding your credit with with new items like a secure credit card or a new loan and you're making payments moving forward but uh, as far as the public record on your on your credit report that'll be there and then your credit report itself because of the bankruptcy is going to be put into a different uh, scorecard and you'll be scored sort of at a, at a disadvantage compared to most of the general public who has not filed uh, a bankruptcy um, so definitely seek the advice of an attorney if you're thinking about bankruptcy um, I think bankruptcy is a good idea if you're just there's just no end in sight there's no way you make way less than 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 what you know you actually owe um, it doesn't look like in the foreseeable future you're gonna be able to pay it off and um, you don't really have a lot of assets or any assets in general and uh, credit is not a top priority. It's more of getting rid of the debt. And maybe you have some creditors that are threatening lawsuits as well due to non-payment. So to kind of go under that protection of the courts and go under the protection of the bankruptcy to avoid a lot of that, then you know, that's where bankruptcy has its place. It's, it's not a bad idea. Um, but if you do have the capacity to pay your debt back, definitely do that. That's the best thing to do for, um, not only for, for moral fiber and doing the right thing and, and you know feeling good about paying off your debt, but also credit score wise, anything outside of paying your creditors directly 100%, it's going to have some type of effect to your, your credit score as well. There's debt consolidation that's out there. Let me kind of break down debt consolidation, uh, debt settlement, and uh, consumer credit counseling. So the most common term is, is debt consolidation. For a lot of people, 
when they're thinking debt consolidation, they think that they are paying a company and the company is then handling their creditors, which is generally true. But within that umbrella, there are different brackets or different types of programs within that um, type of a type of a. Uh, I guess umbrella is a good way to put it. So with with debt consolidation, the most common type of debt consolidation is like getting a consolidation loan where you can you know do an equity loan and borrow against your house to pay off your debt. Um, you can get uh, a personal loan at a bank or a credit union and use those funds to pay off your debt. That's typically a consolidation loan. And with consolidation loans, respect to them, I think they have a good place. I think they have a place in the market. Um, I'm not a fan of borrowing against your equity and using that money to pay off uh, an unsecured debt. You're borrowing against a secured asset and then um, paying off unsecured debt with it. So you're essentially putting all of that debt into a secured asset, which is your house. So, for example, let's say you get sick and you're in the hospital and you can't pay your bills because you're not working for a certain period of time. If you don't pay your creditors, then, you know, it destroys your credit and, you know, there's potential, uh, you know, lawsuits if a creditor decides to, to sue you. And But, you know, really what happens is your your credit's ruined, right? And, and you may have some um, potential legal problems depending on, you know, if you're able to work something out with a creditor or not. Well, take that same scenario where you got a consolidation loan from your house, took an equity loan in your house, paid off the unsecured debt that you have, and then life happens, you're hospitalized and you can't make your payments. Well, now all of a sudden you're on the verge of losing your house, right? Because you put all that debt, you wrote it into the equity loan, which is collateralized by, by, by your property. And then all of a sudden, you know, if you're not making payments to that, you could potentially lose your house. The bank could foreclose on your on your house versus the other way, you know, you're really just kind of, you know, ruining or potentially damaging your credit and having to deal with the creditors individually. But that's all unsecured debt. Um, so that's kind of my stance on home equity loans. I think they have a good place maybe for, uh, you know, remodeling the house or, or just borrowing maybe for business. But um, definitely not, not, a, I'm not a fan of, of consolidating unsecured debt uh, using your, your, your equity and your property. Um, then there's, a, there's consolidation loans that are outside of, of, the property of your house, um, which is if you have typically about a 620, maybe 640 credit score, and then by credit score, I mean FICO score, and the debt to income ratio is not as high, you can qualify or potentially qualify. Again, I'm not guaranteeing approval. You want to definitely talk to your bank or your credit union. But generally, that's what I'm seeing about a 620, 640 credit score uh, requirement. Um, every bank's different, but that's kind of what I'm seeing across the board. They'll approve you for a consolidation loan, and then you can use that loan to lump all of your unsecured credit cards or other loans you may have out there, put in one new loan, one low payment, uh, one new payment, one fixed interest rate, and you're just paying that back. That's not a bad idea where I, I am a little hesitant with, with that is because if you pay off all these other credit cards and you have this new loan that you're paying on and these creditors now these credit cards are like zero balances high limits if you haven't fixed the root problem which may be the 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 financial budgeting aspect or managing your money well you're you're more than likely going to run back to using those credit cards in certain scenarios and so what could have been like a ten thousand dollar debt consolidated with a new loan may turn into a 15 to a 20 thousand dollar debt because now you have this loan but then you went to use credit cards again um so you're just kind of putting a band-aid over the problem but you're making the the the, the problem that it's actually still very long term and it's making it a little bit worse so that's where i have a stance on on using a consolidation loan to pay off uh uh, credit cards and i think that can be kind of kind of risky if you haven't mastered budgeting system and and you're following the budget you're sticking with it if you haven't done that or you haven't mastered it or at least put that together and, and have made a commitment to stick to it then i think it's a risky move to get a consolidation loan to pay off the credit cards because you may end up using the credit cards again digging yourself a bigger hole from a credit scoring perspective um that's actually a a, um, a benefit to your credit score even though you're going to have a new 
trade line a new installment account from the consolidation loan report. Um, essentially, it'll be a wash, it'll be offset, or even a gain, a net gain in your credit score because you're able to bring to bring down your, your credit card balances. That's theoretically that'll happen. Of course, every credit report is, is different, um, but the majority of the time, if you get a consolidation loan, you went from 50 to 100% uh, maxed out on your credit cards, and now you're 0% or maybe 10% utilized on the credit cards and you have a new trade line. Um, this component here, which is balances, is far greater than the new um, account being reported. Um, so this is actually um, a favorable outcome for, for, for your credit score, where it could be Detrimental is you use the credit cards again, and then you made the debt bigger, and then of course you're maxed out again. So that's debt consolidation or consolidation loans. When someone thinks debt consolidation, a lot of times you think about this program, which is also known as consumer credit counseling, um, which is a good option. They're great programs. Um, you can Google um, nonprofit consumer credit counseling services near me to find uh, a national website or a local directory to find a reputable company near you. Um, what consumer credit counseling services are, is they're, they're third party companies that have uh, pre negotiated interest rates and relationships with uh, some of the big banks, some of the big creditors, and they'll bring you into the program. You're, you're going to pay back your debt. You're going to pay 100% of, of your debt back. Maybe they'll work to get a little little bit of the principal reduced, but majority of the time you're, you're going to pay back just about everything you owe. They're going to close out the credit card. So that's where the, the credit um, uh, effect or the adverse action could, you know, could take place against your credit is the fact that, you know, your length of history is going to be shortened once these accounts get closed, because in order for them to be willing to work with you through this program, through a, through a nonprofit or through a credit consumer counseling services, is that the, the accounts do need to be closed. In order for you to qualify for, for lower and reduced interest rate per credit card, um, the accounts do have to be be closed. So that's where the, the the adverse effect comes from, is from the closure of the credit cards. Now, your monthly payment you are going to be paying to this company, um, depending on the nonprofit or organization, sometimes they'll charge like a maintenance fee or an admin fee between 10, sometimes up to 50 bucks a month. Um, and then the remaining uh, amount that uh, you're paying would then go towards your, your creditors creditors each and every month. Um, some cases they would, the, the credit card company would put in the comment section of that account being paid by third party or third party intervention. And it could be good, could be bad. I mean, it actually can't always be good because again, anything outside of paying your credit directly is not good, um, but it's not entirely bad as well. It, it, it depends on who's looking at it, it depends on, on which lender is actually viewing your credit report. If they see that as you know a negative scenario, the way it looks like to them, if they're paying attention is you got into some trouble in the past, you got a little over your head, and you needed a third party to kind of step in and intervene to pay back the debt. So that's the way they see it. Probably what they're more concerned about is were payments not paid on time? Did they not get paid back? Were there any late payments? Was it uh, was it charged off? So on and so forth. Those are some things that they're they're looking at. Probably a little bit on a higher priority uh, level, but uh, that's how consumer credit counseling would work. You're going to pay back your debt. The accounts will be closed, but your monthly payments are being applied towards your account every month. So your payment history um, in terms of on-time payments will, will stay intact and you won't see um, any adverse effect, uh, uh, adverse effect to your credit as it relates to payment history, but then you'll see it as it relates to length of history because they'll, they'll close the accounts that you put into the program. The other option is debt settlement. So not to get confused here, so debt settlement is a, a different option. And de debt settlement actually has been around for a while, but it really got um, a lot of traction and a lot of attention right around 2005, 2006, after um, the bankruptcy law had changed. And so basically with debt settlement is similar to consumer credit counseling, but here here's where it's different. So you are paying a third party a monthly payment each month. Where debt settlement is different from consumer credit counseling is the monthly payment you're paying the debt settlement company doesn't go to your creditors, doesn't go to the creditors each and every month. Because in the 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 whole point of debt settlement is to get your entire principal balance, entire debt reduced 
to 30 to 250 cents on a dollar. So if you have a $10,000 debt, the debt settlement company's goal is to get your 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 debt reduced down to three to five grand, and typically you're you're paying that creditor back in the form of one lump settlement, one lump sum payment, or you know maybe two or three payments depending on what's negotiated with that creditor by the debt settlement company, but. The reason why the monthly payment cannot go to the creditor in the very beginning is that one is not enough to settle the debt and two, there is no motivation. There's no interest for the creditor to accept less knowing that you've been paying them um, a set monthly payment plus interest and maybe 50 to 80% of your monthly payment is going towards interest. So there's no incentive for them to take less, you know, to take pennies on a dollar knowing that you're probably if if the trend continues you're going to be paying that debt back for 20 to 30 years and they're going to make a lot of money off of you in interest that's more appealing to the credit card company or to the lender to the bank that's more appealing to them as the interest payments um, as opposed to taking pennies on the dollar in the form of a lump sum now the motivation to for a creditor to do that is if there are there's no payments being applied towards the account, period, right? So if they're getting zero, uh, getting 30 cents or 40 cents on a dollar is more appealing than zero for the past couple of months. So this is where it's tricky. This is where this is where some people get convinced that debt settlement is the way to go or that their credit is not going to be destroyed. And, and, and some debt settlement companies, I don't mean to bash on these guys, but some debt settlement companies um, are good at explaining the pros and cons of doing it. Some, however, are not. And it's not because they, you know, flat out just aren't being truthful. It's a lot of times they just don't know. They just don't know how, uh, you know, credit scoring works. And that's my space. That's my industry. And that's something that, um, that I would consider myself to be, you know, pretty knowledgeable about and so that's why I want to speak on this because you know from time to time I get people asking me so I got a lot of debt should I do should I get a consolidation loan should I do settlement what should I do and it's really not my job to push someone in a certain direction it's really my job to say here are the pros and cons for each you decide so with debt settlement if you've been paying your payments on time each and every month in order for the creditor to accept less, unfortunately, you'd have to cease payments to your credit card companies because, again, there is no reason for them to take less if you're sending them a payment each and every month and 50 to 80% of that money is being applied towards fees and interest. That's where they're going to make more of their, their money. So typically with that settlement, when you're making a monthly payment, usually it's going to be about 50 to 40 percent less of what it would be if you were paying the creditors each and every month 100 percent um, of what the minimum payments re uh, requirements are so it's a lower payment so it's kind of appealing to people like oh man i was paying 800 a month to my credit card companies now i'd only have to pay 400 um, i'm going to save money so it's true you're sending less out but you also need to keep in mind where is the money going so in a consumer credit counseling service your money is going towards your creditors each and every month in debt settlement, that payment more than likely is going towards um, a non-interest bearing escrow account that's being set up or, or a special purpose account that's being set up to where those payments are going into this account, like a checking account or a savings account, but it's not interest bearing. And it's building up, right? It's building up the balance to where, let's say, six months down the road, you have a $5,000 account with Chase and the bank balance has built to like, you know, 2,500, then that, that settlement company can kind of step in and say, hey, Chase, you know, our client John Doe um, is looking to settle this account. What can you do? They start negotiating. Let's say Chase agrees that, you know, to, to accept 2,000 and settle the debt in full. Then there's enough money in that bank balance that has accrued from the monthly payments you've been paying and then enough to settle that debt you know in full so that's how debt settlement works now when you cease payments from your creditors you're going to go 30 days late 60 days late and then 90 days late so on and so forth most of the damage your credit score is going to is going to occur within the first 90 days because the credit score is nothing more than the likelihood of you going 90 days delinquent in the next 24 months. So once you get that 90 day mark, the majority of the damage to your credit score has been done. I've seen people that have gone 90 days late from, you know, most of their entire life being completely perfect on their payment history, starting off, starting off at like 700 credit scores and all of a sudden they went 30 days late, six days and 90. 
by the time the dust settles, they're like in the mid 400 credit score range. So it could be a big drop when you stop paying your, your creditors directly. The pros, you'll get out of debt a lot faster because you're settling out the debt, principal and interest for pennies on the dollar. The cons is your credit is going to tank in the process, but you can still bounce back from that. You can start rebuilding new credit and start all over again. Um, but now you kind of have a clean slate as far as as far as the debt goes. So do your due diligence around debt settlement. Um, if you have a little spare time, you could probably do it yourself. Um, if you don't have a lot of time, then you may want to seek a professional debt settlement company um, to allow them to do it. Ask for the track record. Find out you know, how well they settle these accounts out. Same thing with the credit counseling service. Find out what kind of um, um, terms and what kind of deals they have pre-negotiated with the creditors as far as interest goes. So you want to find out, you know, where, you know, make sure you get your your, your biggest bang for, for your buck. Um, oh, by the way, debt settlement companies, typically that monthly payment you're paying, a portion of that is allocated towards their fee. Sometimes they'll charge you know, between 5 to 15% um, of the debt that's owed, and that's where they make their money. So that monthly payment you're paying, a portion of that's going to go towards paying off uh, their fee. So that's the... That's pretty much the rundown as far as, you know, getting out of debt um, and as, a, as it relates to to your credit. Again, the, the best thing to do is to just continue paying your creditors or try to send more than a monthly minimum payment. So you keep your credit intact and you get out of debt the old fashioned way just by paying them off. You know, if you got to get a second job, uh, you know, that's that's obviously not the easy thing to do. But, you know, if you go that route and you're able to, to generate a little bit more income for yourself, pay off your debt that way you're going to feel really good in the end it's going to be it's going to be a struggle it's going to kind of suck because <laughs> you're having to work two jobs maybe three but you're going to feel good once you're done with it because you kind of have a little pride in, in the fact that you paid off your debt you did it 100 percent on your own and then your credit stayed intact by the time you're done with it your credit is actually going to probably be better because you had all these higher balances now you do not um, so that's usually the best way to get out of debt and maintain your credit. Everything else has some type of effect to your credit score, whether it's bankruptcy, credit counseling, a consolidation loan, um, or a debt settlement service. Do all your research. Um, make sure you research the company if you're looking into it. Make sure you weigh the pros and cons. How important is your credit today? How important would it be six months from now? How important is your credit, you know, five to 10 years from now? How important is, is certain things ar around your credit and kind of make a decision for yourself which route you want to go. So I'm Joe Chavaria. Thanks for watching. If you uh, got value from this or if you need any additional information, comment below. If you like this video, comment below. Even if you didn't like this video or if there's something wrong about what I said, comment below. I always encourage the feedback and, and definitely like to adjust um, anything that was said and so I can make sure I'm reaching a, a, a bigger audience and able to reach a lot more people. Because I think this information is important to get out there um, because it's something that's not really taught in school. It's not something that many, many parents teach your kids to, to look out for and what to do. So it's, you know, I feel like it's my duty to get the information out there and help you make a decision based on that. So don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you're uh, watching this on YouTube or uh, listening to my podcast, be sure to subscribe um, to receive uh, more information uh, around, you know, consumer debt, credit scoring, business credit, um, anything credit related. Uh, that is my area. I love talking about that. So again, I'm Joe Chavaria. Thanks for watching.